strange little journey that I've taken to kind of get to do this. Uh, you know what, I think the sun might be kind of, there we go. Maybe. <laughs> I'm also learning to present, no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, do you want to just go ahead and get started? Yep. Cool, fantastic. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Um, I'm going to go back and forth with you guys. Um, so if you need me to stop or you need me to, to do something different uh, or slow down, just let me know because I can't, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I can't ever always see everybody and, and um, Justin, if you can just kind of see the chat or whatever, but I'm going to go back and forth between presentation and then also a little bit of drawing on an iPad. So bear with me as we go, we go back and forth. Um, does everything look good? You guys can see my screen. Everybody's good. Cool. All right. So um, yeah, thank you guys for being here or uh, thank you, Justin, for asking me to come and, and kind of share this. I get super nerdy about it. And uh, hopefully when you guys walk away, you'll be a little more nerdy about it um, if you're not already there. So so, so I, I like to start this off kind of just to give you some context as to why I do this and why it works um, kind of in all grade levels, kindergarten through high school. But I, I want to tell this really quick story about where it really started to click in high school with high school kids, which is which kind of counts with you guys. Um, a few years back, I don't know, about seven years ago, um, I had a role at the high school. I was the technology, basically the technology guy. I'm trying to think of who the equivalent is there uh, in Clayton, but basically I had a room that had all the equipment, technology, I had 3D printers, I had GoPros, I had Chromebooks, I had laser etchers, laser cutters. I mean, everything you guys needed, um, that, that's what my room was for. And so, on this particular day, I had a group of kids come into my class because they had an assignment to um, 3D print something. And if you guys have that in your, in your school, you've probably been through some of this process, but basically the teacher said, you know, I need you to create a prototype, go see Herrera, he's gonna help you with it. So this group of kids comes in and um, they said, hey, hey Herrera, we need to use your 3D printer. Um, is that okay? And I'm like, yeah, sure, no, no problem. What is it you wanna print? And they kind of all look at each other. It's a group of four kids and, and they kind of, kind of look confused. And then, then this like miming exercise happens, right? They start to say, well, yeah, we want to print this thing. Okay. And it's going to kind of be like this big. And then we want it to have this tube come out. And then there's, and then start to argue. No, 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 no. We said we wanted to have like a, a rectangular shape. And so I was like, okay, clearly you guys haven't thought about this. And again, high school kids, you probably experience this all the time with group members. Nobody knows what's going on, right? But yet, you know, you need to use some equipment. So I sat down at the table and I said, okay, tell me again what it is you want to create. What is it you're going to design? What does it look like? And they kind of started talking and I just grabbed a dry erase marker and I kind of just started to draw it because I'm a very visual person. I have to see these things in order to understand how I can help them. And probably after about like 30 minutes, we kind of just came up with this. And again, this isn't anything beautiful, spectacular, or awesome. But if I were to ask you to describe this, you'd have a better idea as to what it was and what they were trying to create. Uh, maybe not what, what it was gonna be used for, but you could say, yeah, it's a cylinder shape or it's got a, it's got a tube and it's got some vents on the side. And what was interesting is that the kids eventually started to contribute to the drawing. Um, and this sounds so simple, I know, but when they started to contribute to the drawing, they all started to realize what it is that they wanted to create. And so from there, I'm like, ah, okay. So clearly they don't know what they wanna do, Using a drawing helps them communicate um, that idea. And so the next group came in, kind of did the same exercise. And probably about the third or fourth group that came in uh, for Mr. Knox, they brought drawings with them because they kind of heard that I would ask them to draw. And as the kids brought drawings in, they started to create, they, they, they just started to understand what it is they were trying to create before they even got there. It was conversation they weren't having. So this is kind of how I want you to use drawing um, I don't want to use drawing to show you how to be an artist. I want to use drawing to show you how to think. So with anything, when you guys leave today, um, I'm hoping that you don't think about drawing as like this artistic thing that you can't do. I'm hoping that you can use drawing as a way to kind of think through a problem, think through an idea, think through a prototype, a service, a product, something, because you're going to have people in groups. You're going to have people you work with that don't get it. And if you draw something for them, magically it happens. I still do it now as an adult. Um, and, and it just makes a lot of sense. So often when I do this with kids and with teachers, this is usually what happens. Like I have this whole spill, like I can't draw. I've never been able to draw. I don't draw well. Um, that Again, I'm not going to teach you how to draw well. I'm just going to teach you how to draw without having to really think 
about something. So this is the part where you guys come in and um, you're gonna need some paper and markers. So if you got a piece of paper, grab some markers. I'm gonna build your confidence a little bit and kind of prove to you that you, you can kind of draw anything um, without really, really thinking about it. So uh, take a moment and grab the things you need. So what I'm gonna have you do on your piece of paper, and this is, pretend this is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, and you've got these scribbles. I want you to create five or six of these scribbles, just kind of random doodles. You don't have to, they don't have to look like exactly like mine. They don't have to be perfect. So I'll show you just random scribbles. So uh, that's all I'm doing, nothing fancy, nothing. But five or six of them, spread them out a little bit. All right. So everybody's got about five or six scribbles, not thinking too much, not thinking too hard. All right, so what if I told you that I'm gonna turn these into uh, an animal or into a bird specifically? Um, and any of these will be turned into a bird. And all you have to do is draw the char characteristics of a bird. So I'm gonna use this one here. If I just draw a beak, an eye, and some legs, and I showed this to someone and said, what is that? Chances are they're probably gonna say it's a bird, right? Because it kind of looks like a bird. It's not the best bird, but we can agree that it's a bird. So try that with each of your drawings and kind of just watch what happens with any, I'll even, I'm even turning mine upside down. I'm drawing a beak, an eye, and some legs, and that's it. And you magically have a bird. I don't think I've met somebody who's drawn something that wouldn't haven't been able to turn it into a bird. Contain yourselves, please. I know the excitement is oozing out of you guys right now, please. But the, we always get this one. We always get this, like, oh, well, I can't turn this, the squib. No, man. You change the perspective a little bit of it. You have, that's a bird, man. I don't care what you say, that is bird. I'm still not used to this virtual teaching. You're a, you're a pro at it, I'm sure, Justin, but reading the room is difficult. <laughs> it, it is sometimes hard to do that, but. Uh... <laughs> so, yeah, so um, for those of you who are, who've got birds, let's, if you want to hold up a bird you got and prove, I mean, not prove, but just show that you have a bird. I'm going to see if I can, I've only got a few of you guys I can see. Birds, beautiful, lovely, I see it, yeah, point of the birds. So, okay, the point I'm trying to make with this is that you just drew six birds in probably 60 seconds, right? Uh, I could have told you if we started this activity and said, hey, I'm going to have you draw six birds. Some of you probably would have been, ah, I don't draw well. I don't want to draw a bird. It's going to take me forever. What color? How big? Where's he at? What's he doing? This and that and that and this. We just drew these in, in less than 60 seconds. And this is kind of how I want you to think about drawing when you're trying to communicate an idea. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be perfect. We can say this is a bird and whatever about the bird and we kind of move on with our conversation and keep going. Nobody's gonna worry about how pretty the bird is. So that's what I'm hoping that you take away today. Not, not just that you can draw birds, but other things as well. Thoughts, questions, so far so good? Cool, everybody's, everybody's got birds, all right. So squiggle birds, pretty easy. Try it with your family, your friends. Thanksgiving, this is a fun game. <laughs> if you wanna do this with your family. All right, so usually what I do, I used to do is introduce myself, but that's boring because you know nobody wants to hear me talk the whole time. So instead, I'm gonna have you introduce who I am just by looking at this. So if you wanna unmute yourself, just call out one of the things that you see and what can you tell me about me? Uh, teaching for 17 years. Yep, and education is my 18th year, actually. You love tacos, I assume? I love the tacos. Texas. 
I, I grew up in Texas, originally from Texas, Austin. That's the good part. Photography. I like to take pictures. I love to take pictures of like what kids do in classrooms. Like, especially if I was there, I would be taking pictures of your drawings and what you're doing, what you're thinking. So yeah, love to take pictures. Two boys. I'm sorry? Uh, you have two boys? Is oh, I have two boys, yep. Right? Yep, yeah. I've got two kids. I've got two boys, middle school and elementary. Help me. Golf. I do. I golf. I don't golf well, but I do it. <laughs> Anybody else? My wait time is terrible. I'm terrible at wait time. All right, not all at once. So I'm. I also draw. I'm an. I'm an artist. I'm an illustrator. I ride bikes. I run, and I build stuff specifically. Uh, lemonade stands. That, that's really all I know how to build because I've got two kids and we're, we're, on, we're on the lemonade stand number three. But the purpose of showing you this is that I can communicate to you pretty quickly who I am and what I'm about. And I hardly used any words. And this is kind of the power of imagery. This is the power of, uh, of drawing is that you're able to communicate so much really, really fast. Think about any of your, uh, uh, the apps that you use on your phone. There's, there's only icons on, on, on the apps. There's no words. You, typically, there's not any words when it comes to menus. And that's kind of how drawing and visuals work. So um, another thing that you use drawings for is that in high school, especially, you guys are always asked to design stuff, right? You get asked to design websites. You get asked to design um, campaigns. You get asked to design videos, presentations, prototypes, all that stuff all the time. What we as teachers are terrible about is teaching you how to do it. Um, we just kind of assume that technology is gonna take the place of us teaching or showing you how to create something a lot of the times. Um, and this is also kind of where drawing comes in, is how to think through a project, how to think through a presentation, how to think through a video and plan without grabbing technology first. Because right now when we assign presentations to kids, the first thing you guys do is you grab a laptop or grab an iPad and you open up pages or you open up Google Slides and you start worrying about typefaces, you start worrying about colors, you start worrying about background images. Um, that, that should be at the very, very end. And so I'm also hoping what you take away is how to use this, use drawing to kind of plan out um, the work that you do in school. I've already said this, I'm gonna skip this, skip this because we have limited, limited, limited time. So here, based on some of the research that I've done just to make sure that I'm not just saying things that I think are good, but actually things that are um, based in research. Um, and here, are th these are, I think, six of them, ways that drawing can help you um, improve you know, your ideas and your thinking. Um, definitely memory and recall, that's probably the number one thing. Think about when you take notes, if you guys still write handwriting notes, um, some of you remember exactly what you wrote, where you wrote it on the page, and that, that's actually what you use to um, help, your, help yourself study. Communicate faster, I just did that. I was able to use drawing to show who I was pretty quickly. It also helps simplify complex ideas. Um, this is primarily one reason you guys use, we use um, graphs and charts uh, when we show data to you. Uh, not just to you, but to anyone. We use that because it simplifies that information rather than trying to read a paragraph, we're able to display things in graphs and charts. So I'm gonna show you some examples of how we've used it. So hopefully one of these will kind of click um, with you and like, ah, maybe I should try that. So here's, a, here's an example of a class that I worked with, and this is probably six or seven years ago. Um, they were in our, in our um, CAPS program, or it was apps at the time. We had two students, again, they were playing a video and a presentation. And the first thing they did, as I said earlier, is they grabbed a laptop and they started to go to Google Slides and they were trying to work together. Because we talk about use Google Slides, it's collaborative, or use you know, Office 365, it's collaborative, you can work at the same time. Um, but you still haven't thought about what you're gonna put on the page. And so what I did with this group of kids is I started to teach them how to storyboard and how to plan out uh, a presentation. And it started with just kind of these ideas that they have and using sticky notes, using index cards, and writing everything that came to their mind and putting it on a card put it in on a sticky note. 
writing it on the table. Because then when we're done kind of just thinking through it, we can then organize that stuff. We can then take the sticky notes and put them in order. We can combine sticky notes. We can move index cards around. And then we kind of have our presentation laid out for us. So when we do go work together collaboratively on a document or on a slideshow, we know what we're trying to accomplish. We know what we're trying to do. We know what the end goal looks like. Everybody is literally on the same page. So um, I know, I, are you guys in school at all? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. So, I mean, even when you're at tables, like I don't, I don't know how your teachers feel about it, but we, I would always encourage kids to write on it with dry erase markers just to get those ideas out, just to put them there to maybe copy down later. Like the scramble for paper and pen sometimes <laughs> is it just, is it, is it, it's not enough time. You need to write quickly. So hopefully um, you dirty up the tables in, in, uh, over there in Clayton. Here's another example. Another group of students who came to me Hey Herrera, we want to we want to shoot a video. It's for social studies. Uh, we need to borrow your GoPro, and we need the tripod, and we need the video editing software. I'm like, okay, so what are you going to shoot? What are you, what's your video going to be about? Uh, I don't I don't know. I was like, all right. Well, if, why would I give you the equipment if you don't know what you're going to shoot? And so what we did with this group, and there was three other students that were in this, is that I taught them how to mind map. I think at some point you guys learned how to mind map. Um, ideas, maybe probably in elementary, maybe some in middle school. But what she did was this video was about presidential candidates. And so I said, okay, so start with the middle. Who's the presidential candidate that you're going to talk about? What's everything you know about that candidate? And so they just branched off ideas. Okay, so if this was his vice president. Okay, branch off of that. What do you know about the vice president? What do you know about the next thing? And just in this was two days worth of drawing. Um, and this counts as drawing. This isn't, you know, it doesn't have to be objects. It's also, you know, words and circles. So they were able to organize that and then use the sticky notes to plan out their presentation. And it was so, or excuse me, their video, so much better. But in the end, if they never made that video, I would be happy. I could walk away and say, you know what? They were able to think through that video. I'll chalk that up as a win. Because our idea, the idea is for us to teach you guys you know, how to think, teach you guys how to um, work in groups and how to ideate. Another example, um, similar class that you guys are in right now, high school students in the past, we would ask them to create prototypes. And so um, what we would usually do is we'd ask them to go use a 3D printer and start 3D printing, kind of like the conversation I had with the first group uh, today that I was telling you about this earlier. But instead of now making it and then realizing that um, the prototype's not correct or it's wrong or we messed up. We don't do that anymore. We draw everything out first. And these are not like architectural type drawings. These are not um, to scale drawings. These are just drawings to like help their partner, help their teammate understand what they're thinking. Um, they eventually had to take these to actual doctors that they were working with because in this particular prototype, they were trying to rethink um, immunizations for children um, immunizations are very scary because it's a needle and they're little. Um, so what they wanted to do was they wanted to design a prototype where you disguise the syringe as something that kids like, like an airplane, like a rocket ship, like a, um, a Harry, Harry Potter wand, like a princess wand. And what they, so they did, what they did was they took this to nurses and doctors and told them what their idea was. And then what they found out was that it might not work for a variety of reasons, but they could tweak it. And you can do that with just the eraser and your pencil. They, there's no time lost. There's nothing that you know, you're spending time on trying to learn 3D modeling software. You can get your idea out and, and kind of iterate from that quicker or with that quicker. Another example, uh, we've got a lot of students that were in our program that wanted to design apps. I think every student we've had, or excuse me, every group that's come through, we've always had a group that always wants to, or that's wanted to design um, some kind of cell phone app. And what we were did what we did in the past was we'd give you coding software. Or we'd say, well, you need to learn to code. But now what we ask kids to do is to storyboard our wireframe out apps. So in this example, um, kids actually storyboarded out every screen that's on the app first before they started to put it into some piece of software to design it. Because what they would find is that when they would create screens, they were missing certain buttons or they were missing certain menu options. But they're able to do that so much quicker just using 
simple drawings rather than spend time trying to put it into software. Let's skip some of this. So I want to get to some other stuff. It also goes into note taking. I mean, this is basically graphic organizers, but if you're still taking handwritten notes, again, memorizing where things are on a page will help you recall it so much easier. All right, so we're gonna go back to this, this way of thinking. This is probably my kind of my favorite activity. So we're gonna kind of go back to um, the idea of it doesn't have to be perfect, right? We're just drawing to show ideas and show my thinking and communicate. So um, what, what is this a picture of? Anybody can take a guess. Dog. Dog, pretty easy, right? It's a dog, we can agree it's a dog and we can move on. We're not gonna sit here and worry about the dog, doesn't have knees, we're not gonna worry about the dog, um, is all the wrong colors, it's a, it's a dog and it's made up of basic shape, basic shapes, takes 30 seconds to draw and we can move on. So I want you again to think about basic shapes, Think about the scribbles that we made earlier, because this is all you need in order to draw something to help you communicate. Earlier, we kind of used blobs and squibbles, squiggles, and then we threw in some angles, we threw in some dots. This is all you need. You don't need to know anything else when, you, when it comes to drawing. It's just like um, writing words. Words are made up of letters. Letters are made up of, of, um, of lines. It's the same concept. You're just going to break apart things that you see into simple shapes. So usually we have you draw these, but I'm not going to insult your intelligence uh, by asking you to draw these, but I am going to ask you to try something. Oh, here's an example. Here's some examples of um, objects. I've drawn these over and over and over again, because I've worked with kids the past 17 years. I mean, I've been doing it, you know, since I've been teaching, but probably the past seven, I really started to, to focus on this, but everything here is just basic shapes. I didn't draw anything super fancy. Um, if you look at the, the cow in the lower left-hand corner, he looks like my dog, only I just changed his head out. I, I don't know how often you're gonna draw a cow, but the, the idea is that it's simple. You can make quick changes to things and you can continue to draw um, more ideas or, or know what that image is gonna look like. It's going to take you time if this is something that you wanna do um, to come up with this kind of visual library in your head. So when somebody says, I need you to draw um, you know, the United States, I need you to draw a Capitol building. You're probably going to have to have drawn it a couple of times at least in order to quickly draw it um, kind of kind of from memory. Um, but it's also still important to communicate with people and not just show a drawing because this right here, what is, what do you guys think this is here? Offense. Offense. What else? Maybe like a bridge, like from the top. Uh-huh, like a bridge, a fence. Maybe a ladder. A ladder. Elementary kids say it's a xylophone. So I drew it as a fence. <laughs> I, I was a little offended that I didn't draw a fence well enough that anybody knew what it was. But it's still important to like throw words in there. I'm not saying throw out words altogether. You're still gonna have to have words in there like oil. So, you know, that's an oil barrel. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. I think that's it for this. Okay. But just simple, simple uh, ideas, simple shapes. I'm going to skip this part. I usually have you guys practice, but because I'm the gatekeeper for you guys to enjoy Thanksgiving, I'm not going to do that to you. Um, but if you do draw, it's great to, to see what other people do because other people are going to take similar ideas and simplify them. And you're going to benefit from that. Um, my example of that is, is this earth. When I had kids draw earth, I had an elementary student who just didn't like to draw and spend time on drawing. So he just drew a circle with an E in it. And he said, it's the earth. I know it's the earth. And I remember that And the drawing is for me, right? I was like, touche kid, that's right. It is for you. It's not for me to judge your earth. But if that E is, means earth to you, fantastic. So now I stole it from him. All right, so this is probably my favorite activity that probably applies to you guys the most. Um, and it's called crazy eights. So if you have a piece of paper, if you'll get, if you have another piece of paper, um, if you'll grab it for a second, and we're gonna we're gonna do some folding with that piece of paper. So I'll give you a second to grab another one, or grab that same one and just use the blank side. But you're gonna fold um, this paper piece of paper into eights. And I'm gonna grab a piece of paper.
And I'm going to show you how to fold it into eights. And we're going to use our, our, our big kid language when we do this. So if you hold a piece of paper like this, and we're going to fold it in half, if you hold it landscape, also, when folding paper, don't let your high school teachers tell you this is a hot dog and a hamburger. This is not a hot dog and a hamburger. This is, a, this, this is landscape and portrait. So if you hold your piece of paper, fold it in half, fold it in half, and then fold it in half. So you're gonna fold it in half three times, starting with it being landscape. And it should come out with eight panels. If you wanna draw the panels, to totally fine too. All right, so hang on to that. And I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. So we're gonna do an activity called Crazy Eights. And the way this works is this is a great um, brainstorming activity because oftentimes what we will tell you as teachers, I need you to go brainstorm an idea. And um, I don't think we as teachers necessarily know what that means. And I don't think we ne we're good at teaching you guys what brainstorming means. Um, we just say, go do it, go, go brainstorm. And you know that, okay, well, I'm probably gonna write some ideas. I'm gonna make a list, maybe I'll type them. No, man, there's like, we need to teach you how to brainstorm. We need to teach you how to do these things. And so in this example, um, a problem that students were trying to solve, because we had a group of students who worked in the hospital. And the problem in the hospital that they found was that um, nurses hide wheelchairs. Sounds crazy, I know. But nurses would hide wheelchairs because they didn't have enough wheelchairs in hospitals for all the patients who needed them. So if they hid them, then they knew where those wheelchairs were when they needed them. So they're like, okay, we want to solve that problem. That's an interesting problem, but it, it exists. And of course, first idea probably is like buy more wheelchairs, right? Like that just makes sense. But the closet that the wheelchairs all went in was really small. So you kind of have that constraint. So what we do is we're gonna have, we had them draw their ideas first. So brainstorm ideas, brainstorm solutions to this problem. The difference in, or the difference in this, or I guess the other constraint is this, was that we timed them. So we would start in one panel of the, um, of the piece of paper. And we said, okay, in this first panel in the upper left-hand corner, you have 30 seconds to draw your first idea. What is your first idea as quickly as you can? What is your first solution to that problem? And they said, okay, so they, they went, this group went, kind of we paced everybody, everybody had different problems. I'm using their example. They said, okay, well, we're gonna make a collapsible wheelchair, one that, that collapses even more and detaches, and now I can buy more wheelchairs because now they can fit into the, um, into the closet. And they don't tell us this, they're just drawing. That's all they do is draw in, si in silence. So 30 seconds, if they're finished or not, they stop. We said, okay, now go to the second panel. What's your second idea? you have for this, um, for, this, uh, for this problem. They're like, okay, we'll make a collapsible wheelchair, but now we want it to be able to put in a backpack so that we can put it on the door and you can buy one for every room and now there's enough room. Pretty, pretty decent idea. So then we 30 seconds, they drew, we stopped them, start another 30 seconds. Okay, what's your next solution? This one was multi-purpose. Wheelchair could convert into a walker Fourth idea is where it gets weird because they run out of ideas, right? You only have so many ideas in your head. We started to get to ejector seats. Doesn't make any sense. It was kind of dumb. But we told them, that's okay. Draw it anyway. Because if you don't, you're going to continue to think about an ejector seat wheelchair. It's fine. Go ahead and do it. Draw it. Fifth idea, jetpacks and wheelchairs. Yeah, not happening. But draw it. Put it on paper. Keep going. 30 seconds. And then they got to the sixth idea which is where they struggled. They had a hard time because we were on idea six. They only had really two good ones. And then the student drew this. And their idea was to take existing technology that is in like line bike scooters or bird bike scooters and put it into wheelchairs. So then a nurse at a nurse's station could open up an app and that app would show where all the wheelchairs were in the hospital. I mean, I thought it was pretty genius and pretty clever, but they didn't come up with that until their sixth idea. So the idea is to push past these easy answers and push back, push past like the dumb answers. Well, I say dumb, that's terrible. These not so good, these not so good uh, solutions until you get to the sixth one. And that's the one that really like really worked. They had two more, I couldn't remember what they were, but they had two, we finished them all out. We do all eight. 
So I want you to experience this. And so I'm going to have you work through this. However, um, you don't work in the hospitals. You, that's not the problem I'm going to have you solve. I'm going to have you solve a problem that makes sense um, to you. So here's an example of what it looks like. Uh, another group of students who did this. Simple, easy drawings, nothing fancy. They used words. They explained themselves after the fact because there's no talking during this time. So can you give you an idea of what these, some of these kind of look like, looked like? So here's going to be your problem that you're going to solve. And we've got 15 minutes, which is perfect timing to do this. So how might you improve the grocery shopping for someone, the grocery shopping experience for someone? So think about that for a second. You've all been to the grocery store. I would like, at least like to think that we have. And there's always some part of the grocery shopping experience that's terrible, awful, inconvenient, doesn't work, could be better. I want us to, or want you to identify one area of that experience. And it can be anywhere from the moment you, your moment you get there, from the parking lot to the checkout experience, to the cart, to the, I'm already giving you too much information. Um, any part of the grocery shopping experience, I want you to think about one problem that you would like to solve for someone. It could be for yourself. It could be for a sibling. It could be for your parents. If you know your mom or your dad or your relative complains about this one thing about the grocery shopping experience every time they go, how would you solve that? And so I'm going to give you 30 seconds and we're going to, at a time, and we're going to work through all eight of these, but you're only going to use drawings and words to communicate that. Does anybody have any questions? Oops. Oops. Okay. So I'm going to set a timer for 30 seconds and you're only going to do one of the boxes, just one of the boxes. What would you improve of the grocery shopping experience? 30 seconds. You don't go past it. Just stay on that one. I mean, don't get, uh, All right, ready, set, go. 30 seconds to draw, what problem would you solve? It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, think of the dog and think of the birds, simple shapes. Okay, we're gonna stop. Oh. All right, so now we're gonna go to the second panel. So the second panel, what is the second solution to solving that problem? Still the same problem, but what would be your second idea that you would try to solve it with? And you're gonna draw it 30 seconds, ready, go. Okay, stop. Sorry, that timer didn't go off. Okay, third idea to solve the same problem. What would be a third version of that solution to solve that same problem? Ready, go. All right, so we're going to idea four. And this is like where the jetpacks and the ejector seats and the weird 
crap starts to happen. Um, that's okay though. Draw it. it it's fine. Cause if you don't, it's going to sit in your head and it's going to annoy you. So if, if you're onto a silly idea, just put it on paper. Ready, go. 30 seconds. Okay, so now we're gonna go to where the fifth idea, <laughs> idea number five. What is your fifth idea to solve that problem? Ready, go. And it's fast. I mean, clearly it's fast. But this is where maybe like you're starting to combine maybe ideas or maybe you wanna take an idea and kind of repurpose it. All right, I, uh, what are we on, six? Holy cow. Sixth idea, ready, go. On my, my computer's at 19%, man, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fit this in. <laughs> All right, man, idea seven, ready, go. And if you're not sure, if you don't know, I mean, you can write, I don't know. You can write, you know, uh, but I did have a couple of teachers who've done this and one student who said, you know, I, I like just putting my pencil on the paper because if I do, something comes out. If I don't put it on the paper, uh, I'm, I'm less likely to draw something. But if I put it, I'll come up with something, an idea will happen. All right, this is the home stretch, eighth idea, last idea. How would you solve that problem? Go. Ooh, I may not make 15%. Woo! It's going fast now. <laughs> How do I can I plug this in somewhere? No, I'm good. I'll make it. If your computer just turns off, that means it's the end of the day. <laughs> okay, that'll work. <laughs> All right, uh, stop, stop, it went, it, the timer went off. Okay, so what I would typically have you guys do is, is talk to each other and share your ideas. And, and I do this for two reasons. Um, the first reason is you will look at other people's drawings and you'll be like, oh, you wanted to do this, this, and this, and this you were trying to solve this problem because you're going to visually see what they did before they say anything to you. You'll know what they were trying to do because you can visually, you see that, you see that picture and likely they will not have said anything to you yet. And you know that. So that's great. So they're already communicating to you. Um, the second reason I showed that I show that to you is to, is to get other ideas from other people. What are other people thinking? What other ideas could I use for mine? Because that's kind of how innovation works. That's kind of how ideation works. That's kind of how creativity works is by looking at what other people are doing and building on those ideas. Um, you know, you want, when, you, when we talk about innovation, this is, this is an interesting uh, kind of way to look at innovation. Um, when people just come up with things or ideas, if nobody wants to use it, it's just an invention. That's all it is. But when you create something that other people want to use, that's when it's an innovation. And sometimes it takes working together to do that. So I'm gonna leave, um, I'm gonna leave that for you guys to do um, and talk about if, if if Mr. Hildebrand wants to do that in the next class, because we won't have really time to share with everybody, but share your ideas. What problems were you trying to solve? Um, how were you going to go about it? What was a different angle you took on it? 
Um, actually, this, and this will be the third reason that we did this is because you're working on fluency. I know we talk about fluency with reading and writing, um, but there's also fluency in creating ideas and coming up with ideas as many as you can, as quickly as you can. Uh, and you kind of have to practice that, even to something as silly as the grocery, shor- the grocery shopping experience. Um, because we always tend to want to go with that first idea, maybe even the second idea. But you can do better than that. You can push past it. And, and you get out of your comfort zone. So it's hard. So you have to practice doing it. Um, some of the ideas, and this happens every year um, when we work with the students who are in the program for um, the medical brand, the medical strand um, here in Afton is that everybody wants to take on like either weight loss or fitness, like some problem within that. And every time somebody wants to create, they're like, so we're gonna create this like thing that you can wear on your wrist and it's gonna like track your steps and it's gonna track your heart rate and it's gonna track all your mileage. I'm like, that already exists. Why would you create that again? Like, but that was their first idea and that was their only idea. They didn't know that they could push past that. And so this will help you push past those initial ideas because I. I, I wouldn't say I guarantee, but I'm, I'm pretty sure some of you will have come up with solutions that already exist. One of the things that people say for this activity, students and kids, is that I just want to be able to scan my groceries in my cart, put them in and walk out of the store. That, that already exists. That already happens. You can already do that. I want to create an app so that I can type it in and it tells me exactly what aisle everything is in. That already exists. That's already there. You're just creating something else that already exists. But now you have seven more ideas or six more ideas or, or, or five more ideas. Let me check on my, uh, my time here. Okay. So builds creative fluency, helps you communicate faster, and it also helps you to build ideas off of other people. Steal, basically, is what it would also help you do. Um, I'm going to show you a few more examples, this last bit of how else you can use drawing. This is more along the, the lines of note taking. Um, this was our uh, AP Lit class. I mean, Mr. Hildebrand, every time I show this, I, I just, you know, I think you know what teacher this came from. It pains me to show it. But um, this is an AP Lit teacher whose students were having a hard time keeping up with what was being read for The Great Gatsby. So two students just said, hey, do you mind if we just draw this on the whiteboard? Um, and so they did. They drew it for themselves. The other kids benefited. It's a hot mess. That is not pretty. <laughs> you know, that is not a good drawing. But when they would review what they had read in The Great Gatsby, they would point at stuff. Even after it was erased, they would point like, oh, yeah, Tom Buchanan did this. And then Daisy went here. And this happened. And it was all because it was part of like capturing ideas and memorizing. This is the same activity you guys just did. But we did this with fifth graders. And we gave them sticky notes. And they just drew their ideas out. Presentations. This is how I plan presentations with kids. I told you earlier, we're using sticky notes and index cards. You can also just use a piece of paper and write out the ideas and kind of what order you think they might go in. Same concept, same idea. Oh, this was from your student a couple of years ago, um, Mr. Hildebrand. Um, after it was done with this session, he, what he took away was that he doesn't think, you know, slide one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in that order. He's like, my ideas are all over the place. I didn't realize that I could actually write those ideas out somewhere and then come back to the slideshow and put it all together. I'm like, yeah, absolutely you can. So that was, that was kind of a, an eye-opening thing to me as an educator that somewhere along the way, he didn't believe that he could, he didn't think that he could um, you know, pre, pre-plan a presentation um, that he had to do it in order, just like a slideshow is. Let's skip that, skip this, but that was it. So um, I think this is almost pretty much the end of my, cause I don't wanna, oh yeah, I'm at 5%. So pop quiz, um, can you tell me about me or what do you know about me? And you can unmute yourself and, and tell me what you know about me. Golfer. <laughs> Golfer, yep. Uh, teaching for 18 years and from Texas. Yep, teaching 18 years from Texas. You have two kids. Got two kids, two little boys. You love tacos? <laughs> I love, I love me some tacos. I guess in all fairness, I had to answer some of the other ones. <laughs> Anything else? You like uh, cycling and running. 
I did. I like cycling and running. Taking pictures in class. Taking pictures in class. Kids' ideas. See what I missed. I don't even remember me about me. Oh, I build stuff. What do I? What do I build in particular? Lemonade stands. Lemonade stands. So that I mean, I think if I'd have stood up here and just told you. Hi, my name is Manuel Herrera. I'm a father of two children. I like to take pictures on my weekends. I play golf and I ride a bike and I run. I mean, chances are you probably would have already tuned me out. Some of you probably tuned me out, I don't know, five minutes into this. But by showing you this image, it, uh, the idea is that it probably stuck in your head in some way. And as you thought about, okay, well, what, what do we know about him? You likely thought about where those images were placed. So that's just the kind of the power of visuals with memory. You've seen the power of visuals in communicating. You've seen the power of visuals of of kind of uh, capturing ideas and pushing past initial ones. Um, that's a lot, and, and, and I went really fast. Um, so do you have any questions, thoughts, ideas? Thanksgiving is like five minutes away, but, and you're gonna, what are you gonna do with your family for Thanksgiving? I already tried to get this out of them, man. They were, they're struggling today. I know, it's okay, it's okay man. So uh, scribble birds. Do it, please do it. Somebody, just like one of you do it and then let, you know, report back and let us know what you did with the birds and your family. Um, yeah. Thank you guys for your 45 minutes. I appreciate it very much. Yeah, actually, do you, you, want, you want to mind uh, stop sharing your screen? I'm going to take a real quick, the obligatory group picture and then before your computer dies. Oh, uh, how, do, how, do this, how does this technology work? Yeah, I can, I can stop it. I got it. Okay, thank you. Okay. So if you want to turn those, oh, look at that. Everyone's got their cameras on now. Yeah, I want the picture, okay. at least they're there. All right, I'm gonna take a real quick pick, everybody. Here we go. Put on your smiley face, ready? One, two, three. Oh, that's a good one. Let's, oh, hold on, my, 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 you can see my camera. On, let's do it again. <laughs> I'm gonna be sneakier. Matt, yeah. I'm, I'm taking another picture. Here we go. One, two, three. That's more stealth-like, cool. <laughs> Well, Manuel, listen, really, I really appreciate you joining us today. Um, Absolutely. And I definitely, you know, if you want to have any questions or want to learn more, manueldraws.com. He's also all over Instagram. Um, really appreciate you coming out here today. And by the way, we will be sharing these when we get yes. back. So don't lose them because I'm going to put you on the spot. And if you didn't do it, you better do it over at your Thanksgiving home. <laughs> oh, and, and I wrote a, and I, and I illustrated a children's book. That was my first ever. So uh, go buy it. Go to the website, look at it. Thank you very much. I oh. unplug. <laughs> hey, thanks so much for coming, Manuel. Definitely. We really appreciate it. No problem, Justin. We'll talk to you guys soon. See ya. Bye, guys.